We'll go with uh, Kevin and Tempe. Hello. Hey, Kevin. Hey, how are you? I'm doing well. I had a, I had a question. I was a fundamentalist Christian like yourself, uh, and I don't bother to read the Bible anymore, but I remember this time when I read about uh, Jesus telling the apostles that he would come back within their time. And by what I remember about the Bible, under the Bible's own definition of a prophet or someone that's speaking for God, if they're wrong about anything, they're a false prophet. And I wanted to know how you think that they get around that, or if I'm misinterpreting this. And that it's all in the interpretation, isn't it? Listen to all the excuses that they come up with for why Jesus got it wrong when he said that the mustard was the smallest of all seeds. Mm -hmm. Even in his time and place, there were other seeds that were known by the farmers of his day to be smaller than that. So people will make up any excuse. Well, Jesus was only talking within the knowledge that the people had. But the knowledge that the people had was already more than what he provided. You know, he didn't know when figs were in season, for example. So, I mean, here's a couple of things we got wrong. But you'll just dance around and create, a, and I'm not obviously accusing you, but I'm saying these people will dance around and create whatever excuse they have because they can't make a significant concession like that. Yep, it, it, undermines, it undermines everything. Um, and so there are a number of apologetics, and there are websites that will give you answers to what you're saying about, you know, hey, you know, I, that he would basically return uh, before ever there is gone. Um, the number one, uh, well, in, uh, in the Indiana Jones movie, they actually provide an apologetic for that, and that is that some of those people are still alive and in hiding, um, <laughs> which you can't disprove. So yet there's one more unfalsifiable proposition. I cannot prove that there's not somebody that Jesus was talking to who's still alive and or who isn't still alive and, and hiding somewhere. Um, the other thing is is kind of playing with the language, which is, you know, when, when you say all these things shall come to pass, what exactly are you talking about? Are you necessarily talking about a return? There are others who believe that Jesus has already come back, that that is their particular interpretation of it and that we're living in times after that and that there's something else coming. And they, you know, they've got millennial and post-millennial. Go ahead. I thought Jesus exists right now somewhere in Siberia. There's a whole there's a whole cult uh, in in eastern Russia somewhere where they have their Jesus physically there right now. And there's you can, a guy in Florida who claims that he's Jesus coming back. And yeah, but they, they built a whole town around this guy, and I'm not even kidding kidding about that. I, I I wish I could remember the name that they were using for this. But yeah, they they think he's the modern incarnation of Jesus. He dresses just like the stereotypical vision of Jesus that you get. So he's blonde hair, blue eyes, and white guy. <laughs> no, but he looks a li he looks a bit like Elvis, and only appears in black velvet paintings. Yeah, because that's what you see when you go to the Mormon. When we were in Salt Lake City for the American Atheist uh, Convention this last year, we of course went. To, uh, uh, down to the temple and toured a bunch of stuff and boy it's shocking how this uh, incredibly white Jesus is all over the paintings there. Yeah. Uh, our Jesus when I was a kid our Jesus was blonde and it, it, it did it looked like he was raised in Scandinavia. Jesus and Thor. <laughs> Same guy. Poor girl. Yeah now girl. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, it's just amazing to me how if we use that logic in any other way, in, in anything that doesn't have to do with God, everyone would think you're a crackpot. Yeah, and the thing is that they use it against each other. I mean, atheists really don't have to do any work. If you want to know what's wrong with Christianity, you can ask a Jew. If you want to know what's wrong with Judaism, you can ask a Muslim. If you want to know what's wrong with a Muslim, you can ask pretty much anybody. Uh, they're, they're attacking each other, and they're, they're pointing out the problems in their own religious texts and traditions and failing to see the ones in theirs. There's a confirmation bias there. Because they, uh, and I'm going to put this in scare quotes, know that their God is real. And so it cannot be false. And so any information that comes along that might oppose it um, is disregarded. Arne talked about this on the Unholy Trinity Tour with regard to creationists, um, that it's in their their manifestos, in their um, requirements for being a part of it. Yep, every creationist organization posts a statement of faith wherein they refuse, where they state that they refuse to ever admit when they're wrong. And the way that they usually phrase that is that they will automatically reject any evidence that ever contradicts the scriptural record. So they simply won't consider it. 
It's yeah, just out of the I question. Even call it a, a peer, apparent evidence or appears to. So, if there is some scare quote evidence that appears to contradict scripture, then either our understanding of that evidence is wrong and it doesn't actually contradict scripture, or the evidence itself is false and it is, you know, maybe, maybe even planted there by Satan to deceive people, but it, it, it's, the scripture cannot be, cannot be false is, yes. is their position. I wrote an article about the, the city of Tyre and how it was supposed to have been destroyed in the biblical prophecy by, I think it was Nebuchadnezzar, but anyway. Um, I want to uh, go visit it. <laughs> I, 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 I compared two different uh, religious websites trying to explain away why Tyre still exists. Uh, one of them says that, that the island actually did sink and is no longer there. The other one admits that the island is there and is now attached to the land. And that the, the excuses that both of these websites give to each other contradict each other such that it, it's not possible to be a simple error. Somebody's getting their facts incorrect on both sides, it would seem. But they're, they're definitely contradicting each other on this point. I've come across a lot of those, a lot of those ways of thinking with uh, within my own family, where I from they, they've asked me a question because they're mortified that I'm an atheist, and they and when they've told me to read something, I'll research it and and I'll point out, well, look right here, it's saying they're not going to accept anything. They're, what they're saying is true. And anything that contradicts it is automatically wrong. So why should I use that as a source, you know, for so, or believe what they're saying? So, so one good way to tell, in my opinion, fairly obviously, that this stuff is false and contradictory, is that for each contradictory claim that we found, whether it contradicts something else in Scripture or whether it contradicts the evidence of the natural world. They have provided their explanations, and they have provided many different explanations. It's the reason that there are a thousand or more denominations that all identify as Christian and all point to the same book and all disagree on countless issues. And not only, I mean, even if there, there was a God and one of them would write, you might expect maybe he'd come in and clarify this up with Bible 2.0 or 3.0 or whatever you wanted. Uh, but not only does that not happen, but it's, it should be flatly obvious that, hey, I can no longer say that there's not a contradiction here or that there's not something here that is, is in conflict with nature because we've tried to explain this and we've come up with different answers. That's not, the path, that's not a, a good pathway to truth. It is a demonstration that you are sitting around fooling yourselves. Uh, let, let's find a way to make this work. We're going to desperately try to rewrite our particular doctrine in such a way that it doesn't look quite so stupid and then they fail. Yeah. That, that to me is, is, you know, knock down, drag out confirmation that uh, the idea that the Bible is literally true, it doesn't contain contradictions and, and uh, you know, conflicts with, with nature is, is just flatly false. And one of the desperate rationalizations that I encountered when discussing this topic was uh, asking who owned the land where Judas died when Judas died there. I mean, because in one account you have him giving back the money, in another account you have him go buy the, buy the land, and when he gives back the money, then the Pharisees go buy the land. So who owned it then, and then how did he die? Because in one passage it says he fell headlong, and, and, and in the other passage it says that he hung himself, and it's really kind of hard to fall headlong when your head is tied to a tree. So there's a definite contradiction there. And the excuse that I got was that these two passages that I'm comparing were written by men with different perspectives. And I said, ah, thank you. So you are admitting that this is a human interpretation not divined by God. And then, of course, the conversation ended abruptly there. Because, of course, they wouldn't admit to the fact that they could be wrong or it could be wrong. Yeah, it's frustrating. Yep. I mean, in the debate with Sai, um, he can't possibly be wrong about whether or not a God exists. He also couldn't be wrong about whether or not I'm evidently lying or whether or not I know that a God exists. I mean, it, it, what, what the presuppositionalists are doing are, are taking, are, are following this uh, logical conclusion that they've reached uh, down an incredibly slippery slope that leads to absurdity, that leads to sitting there. And the example that I didn't give during that debate that I wish I would have is telling me that I know that God exists 
and that you know that I know God exists, even if I deny it, is like going up to someone who tells you that they're gay and saying, you're straight. I know that you're straight, and I know that you actually know that you're straight, even if you deny it. I mean, that's, that's the level of absurdity of, of thinking that, you know, you cannot be wrong, and therefore someone else is necessarily wrong about their own subjective understanding of their experience. It's just, it's bizarre. It's beyond bizarre. And, and I used to hear this in grade school when the, the kid would say something ridiculous and they'd say, and then who, whoever disagrees with me is a liar. There's, there's the level of logic. Well, Christians have been doing that for forever. I mean, especially with the homosexuality case where they tell people, oh, no, you're really not homosexual. Oh, yeah. It's a choice. It's a behavior. It's, uh, yeah. It, uh, and we're, and we're going to go pray the gay out of you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, because you you would choose that you would choose to be ostracized from your own society. That 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 makes perfect sense. You would choose to be hated in in a world where there are places where you can be killed simply for being gay or being suspected of being gay. That that makes perfect sense. Also, why also would we choose to be atheists, knowing that God knows everything, and if God exists, and then God knows everything, and the only thing that really pisses God off is when you don't believe in Him, and so if He'll forgive everything else except when you deny the Holy Spirit, except when you make that one unforgivable sin, which is to be atheist. So when you say that you don't believe in God, you better be really committed to that statement. Yeah, because the, the response to that then is, oh, you're just angry with God and in love with your sin, and you are deceived by Satan and blah, 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 blah. blah. Oh, my gosh, it's just uh, mind-numbingly <laughs> stupid at that point. I, I've, I've had that used against me. I've had some classes. Uh, I went back to college, and I've had some classes in religious studies, and uh, because I'm disabled, uh, a couple people have actually uh, put that up as uh, an evidence for, oh, well, you really believe you're just pissy. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for the call, Kevin. I appreciate it. Thanks. Have a good day. You too.